Hi guys, my name is Laura and today I'll be doing a review of the new Revlon Sculpt and Highlight Contour Kit. So this kit was co-developed by Chloe Morello here on YouTube and as soon as I heard that I was like, oh my god, yes, like YouTube power, I was out to Priceline to buy it. So I did get both the kits, there are two kits that she developed. So there is a light to medium kit, which is this one here. And there is a medium to tan kit, which is this one right here. So I do have each of these kits on my face today. The light medium on this side of my face and then the medium to deep on this side of my face. This palette is Australian made, which I thought was awesome. Nothing from Revlon, to my knowledge, is made in Australia. And there is 10 grams of product in each kit. So that means that there is 2.5 grams of product in each pan. This palette I bought from Priceline for $24.95. And when I bought it, which was the day that it came out, they were actually doing a promotion where you got the free sculpting brush as well. So I did use the sculpting brush to use the bronzer and the contour. So I will show you guys how they apply to my face, starting with the banana shade, going on to the glow shade, bronze, and then contour. I really do like the packaging of these palettes. They are very, very sleek, very, very modern, and very, very compact. And there is a nice diagram on the back for those who are not too sure of how to contour and sculpt their face. So that's really nice. Also in the palette, there is an instructional card that shows you in depth on how to use each shade, which I think is quite nice, especially for beginners. I like how the shade only has four shadows or four powders, I should say, because it doesn't give people too much variety where they feel overwhelmed and they feel like it's more approachable that way, in my opinion, um, that they're not overwhelmed with all these colors and that they can just kind of stick to one for each purpose and then just sculpt and contour their face. You know what I mean? So I do like that aspect. She did say that these are, she wanted like a creamy powder. I, she, yeah, she kind of got it. Kind of. Um, these are very powdery, very, very powdery. Let's talk about each shade individually. Now, I thought that it was quite funny, or at least I thought it was funny how my opinion on each shade in the palettes, because they are named the same, same thing, they're just different tones. So there's a banana shade, a glow shade, a bronze, and a contour shade in each. And my opinions of each shade is the same for both palettes, which I thought was quite cool. Banana shade, the only difference between the light and the darker one is that the light banana shade is a little bit lighter than the darker one. <laughs> Both of these are actually quite nice and I do actually really like them. I'll definitely use them again underneath my eyes. That's what I use them for, just highlighting and setting my concealer underneath my eyes. They are a little bit powdery but they're not the powderiest in the palette. The next shade is Glow, which is this one here. The Glow shade in each palette, I do have on the tops of my cheekbones today. This one's the darker one and this one is the lighter one. I really do like it. It's probably the least powdery shadow. Oh, I keep calling them shadows. I'm so sorry. It's the least powdery powder in the palette, in my opinion. Um, I do feel like you do get quite a decent highlight out of them. But if you love something like, say, Becca Moonstone or Becca Opal or the Mary Luminizer or stuff like that, like an intense highlight, this is not as intense as those. But to me, how I see it is that this gives a very, very nice 
work appropriate highlight for me or if I don't want a very intense highlight that's what this does just bearing in mind it does look quite intense because I do have two softbox lights behind me as well as a massive window so that does help like light up the highlight you know what I mean but overall I do quite like the highlight shade in this palette and I'll definitely use it again for like work and stuff but moving on to the bronze shade for both of the palettes I actually do like the bronze shade better than the sculpting shade out of both the palettes. I feel like the bronze shade was done very, very well. And then moving on to the sculpting shade, it's the shade that I hate the most. Like, whew, lord. Like, I cannot even tell you how much I dislike the contour shade in both the palettes. Like, the one in the light medium, it's just such an awkward tone. I'm not flipping you off, I promise. Like, it's just such an awkward tone. Like, bearing in mind, I do have fake tan on, but I have tried this with no fake tan on, and it just... It looks just as bad. Oh, Lord. And then this one here is the medium to tan one, which doesn't look as bad, like swatched, but this one actually performs worse, and it is the powderiest thing. Oh, my God. Like, where's that brush? I'm going to tap it in once. Ready? Oh my god. And it just like flies everywhere. Like look how much it picks up. Like. Like I don't even. Like it's just. It's so powdery. Like I can't even. And then when you try to put it on your face. Then you're trying to blend it out for ages. And it's just. It's not good. I hate the contour shade in both of the palettes. Like don't get me wrong. I think that this brush isn't that good either at applying the contour shade. Applying the bronzing shade is actually quite nice. But because the powder itself is so powdery, and then this brush here, it doesn't offer a lot of, like, blendiness. It's just, it's too much. It's too much. I have tried using it with the NARS Eater brush, the contour shade, and it doesn't look as bad, but it is still very, very powdery. Okay, we're going to move on. I do like the longevity of this palette though. I do feel like it does last a long time on my face, especially the two darker shades. The bronze and the sculpting shade does last a very long time and I'm actually very, very impressed by that. Also, the banana shade and the glow shade last quite good as well, but the mo more noticeable one are the two darker shades and they last quite well. So I must give them points for that. My only issue with the palette, honestly, is the contour shade and the powderiness of the palette. Like, the palette is very powdery overall. Besides the glow shade, all shades are pretty powdery, especially the contour one. That's the worst. Like, when I watched Chloe's video about the shadows, she said that she wanted to develop a cream powder hybrid kind of thing. When I think of that, I think of ColourPop, and I feel like ColourPop executed it so well. But this, I don't feel like it was very good at all. All it is, is very finely milled powder, which is, in theory, is good, but it's a little bit too pigmented for how finely milled it is, and then it's not very blendable either. I don't know how to fix it, and I don't, I've never really worked with anything like this before that's been so hard to blend, especially the contour shade. The bronzing shade, the banana shade, and the glow shade, not so much, but the contour shade, man, like, it's just, it's, like, You'll see it in the demo that I try to apply it and then I'm trying to blend it out frantically. And it's just like, I, I, just, I can't. It's just, it's so hard to use the contour shade. The bronze shade, not so hard. The glow shade, not so hard. The banana shade, not so hard. But for both palettes, I hate the contour shade, man. Hate it so much. Oh, we're just not going to talk about it anymore. Chloe said in her video that you can use this without foundation, hence why she wanted like a cream powder hybrid, or over foundation without powder. So like you haven't powdered your face, you're just going to apply this over the top, or powdering your face after you put on foundation and then applying the powders. So I tried each of the three ways without any base makeup on. It literally does, it, it doesn't look good. Like because it has, like it's got pigment if you have a base underneath, but because, like, it is just a powder. At the end of the day, it's just a powder. It's not a creamed powder. It's not a cream that dries powdery or, like, anything like that. It's just a powder. And for me, it does nothing on bare skin. Well, it does. Like, it adds, like, a shadow, but not in a good way. I would not use this product without, like, a base makeup. Unless you had, like, absolutely perfect skin, like, I wouldn't use this without base makeup. I did use it with foundation, without powder and with powder. I found that with powder, it obviously blended easier. It's just the contour shade, man, and how powdery it is. Like, 
For me, it's not the worst thing that I've ever used, but because I have such high expectations of Chloe and like, don't get me wrong, like, I think she's amazing, and I think she's very, very, very well educated in makeup, and that's why I have such a high expectation, and I feel like she's got a lot of product knowledge, and she has had a lot of experience with diverse amount of products, but I don't feel like she made this very well, or co-developed this very, very well. I don't really know how to word this, my experience with the palette any better. It's just very, very powdery. It does what you want it to do at the end of the day. It's just how you get to that final process that is kind of a mission, in my opinion. Overall, I don't think the product is terrible, and I do think it's actually quite well-priced at $24.95. I'm sure they could have charged like $40, but I'm glad that they did put the price point at what they did. It is actually quite affordable for Revlon in Australia, and yeah, I don't know. Like, I personally don't think it's that good, but if you are going to get it, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, I wouldn't recommend it, and I probably wouldn't buy it again, and I actually regret buying two, but... It's not the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean? So yeah, I hope that helps in some way. I know this was the most undecisive review ever. But yeah, just take away from it that the contour powder is not very good. It is very, very powdery and it's not very blendable that well. Like the darker shades aren't that blendable. So definitely put that into consideration if you're wanting to purchase it. And yeah, I feel like that's all I have to say for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts down below. And I will see you next time. Bye.